Okay, record. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. A very good afternoon to everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our special webinar on how to embark on dual or joint PhD program series two. So um, this is a collaboration between ADAC and uh, International Relations Office, IRO. And we had our first session in February, 9th of February to be exact, as an introduction to what is a dual and joint PhD programs. For those of you who could not um, get the chance to catch that session on the 9th of February, the recordings are already in ADAC YouTube channel for you to have a look. Um, over in the first session, we um, define what is the difference between dual and joint PhD programs, how are the um, processes um, in essence, uh, just, a, just a, a tad on it. We will explore that a little bit more in details today in this session. But we, um, in February, in the first session, we also had um, a few success stories of lecturers who are already doing dual of joint PhD programs with their students. So um, I would highly recommend that you guys get to check the recording on ADEX YouTube channel in order for you to have some better background on the dual and joint PhD programs. So ladies and gentlemen, we will start our session today, series two of how to embark on dual or joint PhD programs. We have a um, special welcome to all the uh, TDRs and the ARs of each faculties in order for those who are going to be responsible for these um, programs to be um, more aware and um, more um, known about how the processes are. Because many of the times people know that it is there, but uh, details wise, not many fully understand it. So we'll have a session today for about two hours, inshallah, where we will cover various topics. We have four speakers with us today. Um, we will start later with Professor Dr. Yong Zulina Zubairi, our Associate Vice Chancellor of Global Engagement on the modules of opportunities in funding. Followed by that, We'll have uh, Professor Dr. Abriza Abdullah, Dean, Institute of Advanced Studies, on the topic of faculty support in dual PhD program. And then later after that, we'll have Kwanur Azian Abdul Bari, Head, Examination and Graduation Section, Academic Administration and Services Center, on the topic of academic management of students. We will have at the end of um, the session, Professor Dr. Khalijah Awang from the Faculty of Science on the topic of dual PhD program with universities in France. So each session or each topic will be for about half an hour, 30 minutes. And uh, with us starting at two o'clock, we will be expecting to end right before 4 p.m. today. So we look forward to listening to all the speakers and um, the, the, the sharing session that we'll have today. I would like to welcome all of you audiences to just, if you have any question at any time whatsoever, just type it in the chat section. If it's relevant to the speaker, the speaker will pick it up. If it may not be, maybe the following speakers will pick it up. So um, don't be afraid or don't be shy to just type in the question at any time at all. If situation requires, I will invite you to switch on your camera and your microphone to ask the question in person, but at least we know the questions are there. And some of the speakers may also be able to uh, embed some information in their um, sharing session later, right? So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker of today, Professor Dr. Yong Zulina Zubairi, Associate uh, Vice Chancellor of Global Engagement at University of Malaya. Prof. Yong was previously the Director of International Relations Office or IRO, and her areas of research interest are medical and circular statistics, and also the interna interna internationalization of higher education. 
She's also involved in the National Graduate Tracer Study by the Ministry of Higher Education. She has held several management and committee posts at the faculty as well as university level. These include Deputy Director at Center for Foundation Studies in Science, or PASUM, Executive Officer at the Center for Community Engagement, Deputy Director for International and Corporate Relations Office, and also Academic Advisory Committee at the Institute of Postgraduate Studies. So we look forward to listening from Prof. Yong. Over to you, Prof. Yong. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Noraza. First of all, thank you very much, the IRO team, as well as ADEC for organizing the second series on this webinar on how do you go about supervising students on a dual PhD program. I know my topic, uh, looking at the opportunities will get a lot of people excited. So I will try to do my level best to provide as much information as I could, and also will be more than happy to entertain questions pertaining to that. On that note, I am mindful of the time that is given to me. So I think it is best on for my side. I do not have and I'm not going to do uh, any slides so that we can have a more interactive session. So as a start, please allow me to give a very brief background of, of um, uh, with regard to the uh, funding that, that the university provide. Um, we out with the dual PhD program. And one of the key things that is very important to push this agenda is to provide the financial assistance. So the university has put aside a small amount of a partial funding for students. So what I will share with you is what is actually the partial funding. Point number one, the partial funding is not automatic meaning to say that not every student who registered on the dual PhD program will be able to get the funding. Number two, this means the students will have to apply for that funding. Now, the next question that I'm very sure that comes to your mind, how much and what kind of funding? So the, the amount um, really depends on the length of the study of the student. So in a dual PhD program, I take an example, a typical example, a dual PhD program, a three-year program, one and a half year in Malaysia and one and a half year at the partner university. Okay, so the student, I think in the last webinar, we know that must be registered at the very start at University of Malaya. So the funding that at the central level we provide does not cover the tuition fee of the candidate. Okay, I have to make clear on that one. So then how do we assist a potential student? One way of doing it could very well be the students be registered as, as a GRA under the local supervisor. Yeah, so meaning to say that during the time of the first, let's say, one and a half year at University of Malaya, we do not have any special funding uh, to, prove, uh, to assist the students. A lot of the time, the previous students that we have, uh, the financial assistance very much um, are from the um, grants the supervisor has, as well as grants from the international partner. Then, after one and a half year in University of Malaya, for example, that's the next one and a half year will be at the partner university. So this is where the funding covers. This from Kuala Lumpur to, to the place of destination, a return trip, as well as um, the monthly allowance, a housing allowance, uh, for the student for a maximum of one and a half year. So that is the maximum amount that we, that we cover. Naturally, the next question that you would ask me is how much? The rate that we offer for that funding follows very much like the rate that is given by JPA. So the AASC team has actually 
platform uh, has been working on it. They have gotten the, the details of per country, uh, the JPA rates in, let's say, Australia, in the United Kingdom, and so forth. So that is the basis. So in other words, that is the total amount that we provide, i.e. The, the flights, uh, if it's uh, going in the winter, um, very much like the uh, JPA uh, uh, clothes for winter and uh, allowance and so forth for a maximum of one and a half years. Okay, and as I as I like to recap, this amount is not automatic, but a student must apply once they have registered the first year at UM. You can straight away apply. Now there is a committee on this one uh, where the university has created a tabong for the dual PhD. So there is a committee where the committee will be looking at, of course, a few other things would be. The, the field of study, the quantum that the students will need, and so forth. Now, um, if I may share some other, so that is generally the funding that we provide. But if I look at the data that we have had, there, was, there are a few other uh, financial assistance that is provided. The first case, yeah, we had a student who is a, um, who is a candidate of a slap slide, okay? Being a candidate of a slap slide of university, during your stay, during your study, throughout the study, you get the, the financial assistance from the, uh, from the MOHI on and So what we do is that, but somehow the grant, the, the financial assistance as well, the allowance is only for local. So after one and a half years, the kind of uh, funding that we, we provide would be making up the difference sounds of 2,000 ringgit during the stay. So let's say we're going to country A and looking at the deep, uh, the amount needed then is that in other words we will cover the difference in to enable the students to study at the other the partner university during the stay at the partner university so that is one example that we have done in the past another arrangement of looking at the data that we have uh, from the previous graduates under the dual PhD program is the funding uh, is from a third party or in fact from the other partner university. One particular example is NICE in uh, Japan where the, uh, the assistance uh, was also extended to the dual PhD program. As well, we also have in the past with another uh, dual PhD program with uh, LGMUS, where some funding also was provided by the other partner. Now, surely that the next uh, question that comes to your mind, so who applies for that funding? What has happened is that for these two cases, the supervisor from UM as well as the other partner university, they have planned well and they have applied funding on the other side uh, and the, dual, the uh, candidacy for, for this uh, the, uh, PhD student is already factored in when they come up with the proposal. So uh, in a way, um, you know, when, when they work on the, the, the funding, it includes the proposal and in that proposal, it, it has that amount where the students will be spending some time at the partner university. So I think that's pretty much that I would like to share with you. And of course, the final note is that, right, if you have that, that facility, so where would you apply where would you advise your students to whom should we apply? Well, number one, because the number that we have as well as the amount that we have uh, to support this is it's small. Uh, we don't have that lot of money to support, but there is some. 
So because of that, we do not advertise. So if you have planning to you know, take up a, 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 and supervise a PhD student under the dual, it is worthwhile, number one, to talk about the cost with your partner. Try to explore, try to exhaust as much as you can the possibilities if there is an, any other any assistance from the other side. Yeah? Then once you have established that, then um, the uh, once the uh, you know you've already gotten the students, the next thing is that you can advise your students to start applying. All you need to do is simply drop an email to either NCA or PNCA, then we will provide the information, uh, the necessary information. In fact, AASC has got a dedicated officer that helps us on managing this, but I, I shall leave it for now. Um, the AASC will be uh, providing more information, perhaps uh, Puan Azian later on. Yeah? So on this note, I shall stop for now. So that, okay, this is 2.17. I've spoke, um, I've got, uh, you know, said uh, so much in 17 minutes. I think I would like to dedicate the remaining time that is allocated for me for question and answer. So I'll pause for now. Any questions from the floor? Any uh, Let's see if there's anything question yet on the chat section of your, but if there's any, please welcome to unmute yourself or type it on the chat section. Yeah, everyone. If there is no question yet, um, maybe I can invite Prof Abriza to stand by. Um, we'll wait for a few, uh, maybe one minute, in, in case. So the summary, Prof. Young, the summary of your um, message about funding. I'm, I, I don't switch on my camera because your internet is not so strong. So we, we all switch up our cameras. It's okay. Um, there's no funding. The funding will, require, uh, will be uh, uh, according to the JPA rate if the student already has uh, slap slide, you will have a uh, uh, met. Uh, the, the, you, uh, I mean the UM will cover the gap between the amount that student already have in terms of scholarship with the in supposed um, GPA rate. That's what um, I understand. Uh, yes, we have one question from uh, Dr. Andri. Dr. Andri, would you like to switch on your microphone and ask in person? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Dr. Nur Azza. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Prof. Yong, for, for, for the, the information. Uh, I, I have one question, actually, regarding the funding. So in some cases, it's probably the supervisor do not have available funding. But the partner that we have is willing, actually, to support a full funding during the student stay, the 18-month student stay. Uh, will it be possible that the UM financial uh, support that was meant for students stay in overseas be used for uh, the salary of students in Malaysia? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Andri. I think I also will, will switch off my video because I think it's, it's better. Right. Now, uh, the funding is under a particular tabung, and that tabung has got its toll. Okay, looking at the toll, unfortunately, uh, it does not cover any financial support during the stay at UM. But then again, I, I would not kind of like, you know, putting it a, a definite no. Uh, this is because at the central level, we would like to promote as much as we can and try to as much as we can support um, supervisors willing to supervise students on the dual PhD. We can have a separate conversations, perhaps looking at roping in the TNCPNI as well as the T, perhaps the TNCA. Some arrangement can be done. One of the way that we can explore is to have the graduate teaching assistance. Yeah, graduate, graduate teaching assistance uh, enables students to gain some uh, financial aid on teaching per hour. So that can be arranged and um, as well as uh, 
we can also explore with uh, TNC PNI and see what kind of arrangement. So I am not discounting like giving a definite no, but looking at according to the tour of this carbon, unfortunately, we are not able to do it, but we can explore and see how else we can support. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions from um, TDRs or faculties? I guess so far, no, but um, I'm sure Prof. Young will be staying throughout the session. So I guess... Um, yes, yeah. yes, thank you so much, Prof. Young. I guess uh, it's good if you if there is any question, still just type it in the chat section, regardless of who it's... Um, um, address to. Um, I'll now invite Prof. Abriza to start her sharing. Prof. Abriza is a professor at the Department of Library and Information Science, University of Malaya. Currently, she's the Dean of the Institute for Advanced Studies, UM. Prior to this, she served as the Dean at the Faculty of Computer Science and Information Technology, and also the Dean of the Institute of Postgraduate Studies. She's a Senior Academic Associate at Cyber Research Limited UK and is currently involved in an international research funded by the Alfred Sloan Foundation that investigates the scholarly communication behaviors of early career researchers involving eight countries. Professor Abriza is the chief editor of the Malaysian Journal of Library and Information Science, which is indexed in both Web of Science and Scopus. She's currently a member of the Malaysian Open Science Alliance under the Academy of Sciences Malaysia, chairing the Working Group on Capacity Building and Awareness and newly appointed as a member of the Steering Committee for the International Science Project sorry, International Science Council project on the future of scientific publishing and the stakeholder committee for the directory of open access books. So we, we look forward to listening from you, Prof. Abriza, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Azhar. Most welcome. All right. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon to everybody. Okay. Um, well, I have been given this topic yeah, by, uh, by Dr. Azhar, I believe, <laughs> about faculty support in dual PhD program. Uh, and I am very pleased that Prof. Yong has actually covered uh, one very important uh, uh, support in, in, uh, uh, in dual PhD program that is in the aspect of um, scholarships or financial assistance, so of which uh, uh, this is not going to be covered, okay, in 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 my uh, my my sharing session today. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Azza and viewers, uh, uh, what I'm going to share with you is just based on my observation and my limited experience when I was at uh, the Institute of Postgraduate Studies, serving as a dean for one year, uh, 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 for 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 one year. All right, uh, in which uh, that there were occasions where I, I had to uh, deal with uh, students' applications uh, in relation to, uh, you know, uh, funding and also uh, getting uh, sponsorship and also, uh, you know, connecting to supervisors and also handling uh, 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 supervision or co-supervision matters at the, at, the, uh, at the center last time, at the institute last time. Uh, so basically, uh, let me just recap. Okay. Um, all right. Let me just recap. Uh, what is dual PhD or uh, most of us, uh, perhaps the supervisors here, uh, know that it is a uh, 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 Kutel PhD, okay, in, in France, uh, which connotate two teachers uh, supervising. So basically, uh, it is a, uh, it is a program where a research candidate is jointly enrolled at two universities and spends time at each university. And University of Malaya has a definition of it, okay, of which I believe uh, uh, Puan Azian okay, will take us through uh, UM's definition of a dual PhD. 
uh, and the objective is basically to create a network of collaboration. And in the context of UM, a dual PhD a programs has been established through uh, estab uh, through a, um, uh, through IRO. Okay, connecting, uh, identifying potential universities which have already been uh, collaborators in our system. Uh, so at least one supervisor should be appointed from both institutions. So in my experience, most of the most of the dual PhD candidates uh, uh, at UM they have uh, two supervisors, okay, from UM, uh, and the candidates who graduate from the two programs will uh, in the end receive two certificates, uh, and both certificates must uh, establish uh, the uh, must indicate the collaboration. So, uh, so in the context of uh, uh, University Malaya offering a, a dual PhD with a partner university, University Malaya is the home university, and Labara University, for example, uh, is um, uh, the host university. Uh, well, I purposefully, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 selected a Labara University uh, here today because uh, if if uh, there are actually you know uh, my my colleagues from the department or the faculty uh, perhaps uh, uh, would like to establish a dual PhD with Labara University in uh, this discipline library information science for example because it is rated very highly uh, in terms of uh, uh, QR uh, QS ranking in the subject of library information management. Uh, in fact, uh, at UK, although Labra University is positioned only 21 uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the global subject ranking, but it is the very best university, uh, you know, offering uh, uh, a library information, uh, uh, you know, management uh, programs uh, in UK. So this is basically to, uh, to, to somehow uh, uh, encourage, okay, uh, my colleagues to establish the first, uh, you know, dual PhD in this uh, in this uh, discipline, in this subject, which ac actually uh, bring University Malaya top, uh, you know, uh, in the context of the country, yeah, in terms of uh, QS ranking, yeah, number 28. All right, so basically, <clears throat> okay, uh, it started at UM since 2008, then again, uh, I, I, I leave this to uh, uh, Puan Azian yeah, to take us through the statistics Okay, uh, our performance in offering uh, in graduating dual PhD candidate. Yeah? So uh, we understand that uh, Prof. Young, yeah, being the Associate Vice Chancellor for International, is responsible to make sure that the guidelines are all followed by faculties uh, during the implementation of dual doctoral program. Because uh, uh, KPT and also uh, MQA, they are seriously looking into how we interpret dual PhD and how we conduct dual PhD, and we need to comply with their rules and regulations. <clears throat> okay, so this is basically the rationale for dual PhD, either at the institutional level, faculty level, or departmental level. It is very important for me to just share this first, yeah, uh, because uh, knowing the rationale, knowing the benefits, then I believe that it will motivate, okay, faculties to actually uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, start to find candidates, for example, all right, to do dual PhD uh, uh, because of the benefits that it can offer to the faculty and also to the department. All right, for, for UM, the rationale of our dual PhD is basically to capitalize on existing institutional cooperation formalized in a framework agreement. Okay, so we have various MOUs and to make sure that our MOUs are active, all right. So, salah satu pengisiannya adalah dual PhD. And also, at the faculty or department level, eh, this is actually to give effects to our institutional strategies, especially in the context of internationalization. Uh, and also, in terms of, uh, you know, individual uh, lecturers or potential supervisors and also research group, it is to formalize existing scientific cooperation okay, between a UM, a research group, for example, or UM supervisors and the uh, partner universities. Okay, in the end, eh, the motivation is actually, the rationale is actually to show resources and expertise to benefit all parties. And finally, uh, one of the rationale for dual PhD is for the successful uh, the successful candidate, yeah, okay, to serve as a catalyst for more students to do dual PhD. Or right, I'm not sure how this uh, uh, whether we have actually demonstrated this or not. All right, but anyhow, 
uh, you know, even the literature uh, at uh, South Africa has actually identified that, okay, um, uh, they, they are able to increase the number of PhD students because uh, the dual PhD students can actually, you know, attract, okay, international students or attract more students, okay, to do dual PhD. Okay, so dual PhD attract more students uh, to a particular university. So I'm not sure whether we have this data or not. All right. Okay, so other rationale for dual PhD uh, are such as uh, uh, to, to gain confirmation of quality or standards because okay, the PhD, uh, uh, they are supervised and assessed okay, by two sets of examination, examiner, panel of examiners. Uh, and also uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is what I, I get okay, from my, my visit to one a partner university last time. Uh, international degree, especially from Europe, uh, is important for, for, uh, uh, is important for uh, employability uh, of graduates, especially if the graduates, okay, if let's say our international students or even our local students, they want, if they want to work abroad. So basically, these are the rationale for dual PhD. And of course, um, uh, there are exceptional benefits that the candidate uh, can get from from doing dual. Eh? Okay, so I have listed here uh, some of uh, the, the the benefits. Okay, uh, and also the benefits are not just to the candidate. Of course, the benefits also goes to goes to the supervisor, goes to the research um, uh, research group members. Okay, because uh, dual PhD or any kind of a joint degree program uh, can be seen as representing the deepest level of collaboration. So you will definitely benefit uh, from a collaborative work, especially from joint publications, uh, because uh, in fact, uh, 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 international collaborative papers has its own merit in research, uh, you know, uh, uh, research assessment exercise. Yeah, uh, perhaps it is not uh, done here, uh, uh, in in UM, for example, we do not assess uh, papers based on uh, uh, you know the the internationality or internationalization of the papers. But definitely in in uh, uh, you know uh, in REF, for example, uh, international collaborative papers or joint publication has a, a more merit, okay, uh, than uh, you know a national collaborative papers. Uh, and also, um, you know the, the the benefits to to the to the supervisory team or to the supervisors, it can actually uh, you know, um, uh, 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 facilitates their international experience and networking. Uh, and also, even the supervisors also have the opportunity to conduct research visits uh, to the partner university. And also, uh, the student and the supervisor have access to their partner's uh, network or sig significant network or other collaborators. Um, and, and continuously, this will contribute to the shaping of our, our doctoral uh, uh, graduates and also uh, supervisors, uh, you know, lead to further collaboration, lead to further projects. And in the end, uh, it is expected that this will also foster more a dual PhD program at both universities. So there are exceptional benefits uh, to the candidate, to the supervisors, uh, to the partners, to the supervisory team, and in the end, to the university, of course, to the faculty and also to, to the department. So uh, taking you through this is very important for me to actually, you know, like what I said just now, uh, uh, encourage or motivate faculties and departments actually to, uh, to, to start uh, looking for candidates or perhaps, okay, to be more uh, proactive uh, in, in offering dual PhD programs. All right, uh, I have actually, uh, talk a, a, a bit about the perspective okay seen from uh, the rational benefits from the from the institutional aspect uh, from the department faculty and also from the candidate yeah but okay actually the, these are the essential attributes of dual phd program why why do you want why do we want to embark on dual phd program or why do we send uh, why do the government send okay our 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 um our staff, for example, okay, Malaysian uh, students, for example, uh, abroad. Okay, basically, yeah, in terms of dual PhD program, okay, it is to foster academic fundamentals. We know that, okay, uh, the most important, uh, you know, attributes of dual PhD is actually to promote citizens' mobility and employability, all right, and in increase, uh, you know, uh, international competitive competitiveness of Malaysian system of higher education, uh, you know, to attract. Um, uh, worldwide, uh, worldwide attraction for students and scholars. But, however, okay, because of um, because 
uh, when do, uh, when students do research, yeah, they have actually the obligation, the responsibility to make sure their research are actually disseminated okay, globally. So dual PhD program actually fosters scientific responsibilities in terms of to make the research globally inclusive. Also to make sure that ideas, evidence, or whatever data, they can circulate freely, disseminated widely and deeply. Because most of this, uh, the universities that actually embark on dual PhD, especially in Europe, they are really into this uh, openness and transparency in doing research. So they have the scientific responsibilities actually to make their research, to maintain the rigor of their research, and in the end, communicate the result, results of their research okay, to the global community, not just only to the scientific community. So this is actually what they uphold in relation to openness and transparency, and they are practicing open science. Okay, and another thing is that important attribute, dual PhD program should be adapted adapting to change okay, because of digital technologies or right, perhaps okay, mobility can be done virtually. We have digital technologies, we have enlarged opportunities uh, to communicate, to collaborate using digital platform. Okay, and even uh, if uh, learning, uh, even online learning and, and conferencing, online conferencing, they are capable to take the place of face-to-face -face events and connect with peers globally. Uh, so bearing all these attributes in mind, uh, there is definitely a way for us to look again, to revisit, okay, how we are going to offer dual PhD program, all right, without uh, compromising, okay, quality and also uh, the guidelines and also the standards that MQA has actually established. All right, so, uh, okay, I just have five more minutes, um, okay. Yeah, Isaiah, Dr. Isaiah, like give a minute. Okay, so these are basically the spot, the support that are required. You okay, have by, three yeah. o'clock, Abriza. Yes. Three o'clock. So oh. I don't know. Oh, lama lagi. Oh, saya ni. Boleh, boleh. Okay. All okay. right. So, uh, okay. So basically, okay, apart from uh, 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 Prof. Yong punya topic tadi, okay, about the funding, this is actually the support required. Okay, support required uh, by uh, 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 in a dual PhD program. Okay, so the important thing is that, all right, um, uh, there should be rapid communication of uh, information on dual PhD, okay, uh, on digital platform, right? So, whatever. Uh, uh, informational materials that address why, what, where, how, okay, should be, uh, uh, should be communicated, okay, to uh, to our students, yeah, to our uh, to potential candidates, or perhaps uh, to to our PhD students. All right. Uh, uh, so what we need is actually to open up whatever information that we have in the guidelines, okay, uh, on the web. Yeah, so this need to be normalized, all right? Uh, and also academic and social support to the candidate. This also is very important uh, because we understand that uh, PhD students, uh, they, they have, uh, you know, uh, various challenges and dual PhD candidates, they have even more, all right, challenges, all right? A lot of challenges that they face, uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, uh, to make sure that uh, the partners come into agreement uh, in terms of the curriculum uh, that, uh, that, uh, that the candidate has to undergo uh, to access the funding, yeah, if there is available funding, for example, or if they have to cover extra expenses, and then issues to uh, relate to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, co-supervision, for example, uh, and also academic differences. Yeah? So they have a lot of challenges and uh, the fact uh, the, that the institution, yeah? that should be an institutional support in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, uh, uh, to normalize this, okay, uh, uh, giving academic and social support to the candidate, all right? Okay, in terms of uh, developing and implementing, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever there are available in the guidelines, all right? Well, we do have an established framework for enabling dual PhDs. I believe later on we are going to have a model, okay, that not only support, uh, you know, uh, the the uh, the uh, sponsorship, okay, or, or finance, uh, 
uh, financial assistance to our PhD or dual PhD student, but also to support the essential attributes of dual PhD that I mentioned just now. For example, taking into consideration, uh, you know, uh, you know, the change in technology. All right, for example, to do definitely we are doing it now, right? Uh, okay, in terms of uh, viva, for example, in terms of uh, you know supervision, for example, in terms of class. Enhance supervisory capacity and complementarity. This is very, very important. Okay, uh, dual PhD students. Well, PhD students they do need uh, definitely. Okay, they they uh, they they uh, they need to have, you know, a, a, a support. Okay, that, uh, from their supervisors. Yeah, but in terms of dual PhD students, they have they they need. I would say double eh? because they have to communicate with two supervisors, all right, and the supervisors, uh, both supervisors from, from, from both universities should also be communicating very well. So this is where okay, we can see, okay, our past experience of having dual PhD, they are established uh, in a form of, uh, you know, uh, uh, supervisors that have the experience uh, or establishing the collaboration from their, with their partners very much earlier. Okay, so there is a trust uh, uh, in terms of relationship that actually can help, all right, uh, the students actually to get, uh, you know, um, uh, better supervision or attention from their supervisors. So enhance commitment of key role players. This is not just the supervisors, but also people, okay, that are managing, yeah, uh, that are administrating okay, the dual DH PhD program, uh, for example, our officers, okay, for example, uh, various parties in the university, all right, very important, there should be a research engagement manager, okay, uh, 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 that, that can, uh, can guide, okay, uh, the candidate and also the supervisors uh, for, the, for the MOU and MOA, for the Kotel arrangement. Okay, and what uh, Prof. Yong has mentioned just now, a sustainable funding model. Uh, well, uh, for, for now, we understand that uh, what Prof. Yong had said just now, it is not advertised, but definitely we need to think of a sustainable funding model, uh, you know, uh, uh, for dual PhD. Uh, if we're really serious about doing this, yeah, uh, more, and also to leverage more research grant funding opportunities for dual PhD and with uh, an enhanced supervisory capacity for dual PhD, definitely uh, this support can be given to our to our candidates. Okay, uh, so, um, <clears throat> all right. So in, in setting up a dual PhD, uh, uh, the order of events will normally occur in one of these uh, two routes. So route one is, we are very familiar with route one. Okay, and most of our students, uh, past students doing dual, uh, they came from Route 1, okay, where their supervisors uh, from the home and host universities, they have actually developed a dual PhD program. They have established, uh, you know, prior collaboration, all right, and, uh, uh, you know, they, they will then uh, 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 discuss and agree on the funding, uh, and funding is secured, and after that, the MOU will be established, and uh, proposal advertised and open to prospective students. Uh, so I understand that this is uh, most of our uh, PhDs, uh, dual PhDs, the candidate came from this route one, but there are also a small, uh, uh, um, uh, little, I mean, a small number of examples of uh, a dual PhD candidate that came from route two, meaning that uh, uh, we have students who are very much interested, okay, to do a dual, and they have a, a doctoral project proposal, and they also might have uh, secured funding, for example, uh, uh, you know, SLAP SLI, for example, or, or, you know, JPS scholarship, for example. Okay, so the student should approach one or partner institutions, or perhaps to the supervisor, okay, approach uh, the potential supervisors, perhaps, okay, uh, through our researcher engagement manager, okay, perhaps uh, definitely, uh, uh, you know, our officers from IRO, okay, with a request to pursue a PhD. So given route two, def definitely, if we have more students coming from route two, more students that we can attract, okay, to do dual with UM from route two, all right, we will have more new partners. So this is what, what I foresee. Okay, in setting up a dual PhD, uh, we should also try to, you know, uh, uh, provide opportunity, attract more people and advertise, for example, that is a possibility for you to do dual PhD. So when, uh, you know, maybe at the faculty level, if you do marketing for dual, uh, for your PhD work, 
for your PhD program, uh, there is a possibility uh, for uh, the faculty also, for the deputy dean, uh, postgraduate also uh, to uh, to to you know to to market this dual PhD at UM, yeah, not just uh, going for uh, the conventional uh, uh, PhD at UM. All right, so when you market, so this is what I foresee. Okay, if we want to attract more uh, dual PhD, then we should uh, start now. Okay, advertise our dual PhD program. Okay, all right. So with that. Uh, if we can agree, if we can agree that this will be at least okay, the 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 kind of support that should be in place uh, at the faculty, right? Um, hopefully, we can attract more more PhD student, a dual doing dual PhD. Uh, first of all, okay, proactive and committed supervisor and supervisory teams for both route one and two. We can see success stories coming from engineering faculty, coming from faculty of science. Okay, uh, where they have, you know, uh, if, we, we, if we mention uh, some names, for example, we know that these people have actually produced a dual PhD, all right? Okay, so they, they are in, uh, uh, very often they are in a, a group of, uh, you know, a group of uh, supervisory team, okay? All right, uh, another thing is that, uh, I, I foresee that, okay, another support that should be in place is to have a dedicated dual PhD coordinator. Uh, it need not be an academic, okay, somebody that can actually coordinate at the faculty who will handle applications and point candidates in the right direction if the candidate are not sure about anything, okay? All right, uh, the third, and to me is very important, is that we should have, or faculties, uh, should have a dedicated website to inform, uh, you know, uh, uh, potential candidates, okay, on dual PhD, okay? So dedicated website on dual PhD information. So on this website, okay, like what I said at the institutional level, we have to open up, translate our, our, our guidelines, yeah, our guidelines, okay? Uh, have it, okay, on the website, uh, also the applications form, whatever possible fundings, to the extent that we can actually be more transparent or detail out the tuition fees at both universities, because we do have this information, okay? And also information on how it is being implemented, uh, whether it is, it is going to be concurrent or sequential, depending on the partner university, right? Based on past experience. Uh, include the curriculum structure, especially at the partner university, because some partner universities have a different curriculum structure for PhD, and also that is a possible for credit transfer for especially a research methodology. Okay, uh, and also, if there are possible dual PhD project, I would say advertise them, put them, okay, put them on your website. All right, definitely, uh, this will. I mean, if. There, definitely people will come, all right? Perhaps we do not want, uh, perhaps faculties do not want uh, to handle this where students will, you know, ask a lot about that. But to me personally, I feel that, okay, if we have a PhD, a dual PhD set up in place and also funding, uh, wh why not, okay? We, we, can, we, can, uh, we can actually uh, advertise this openly on uh, the faculty website. All right, uh, universities and schemes that administer dual PhD. This is what I see. Okay, uh, uh, just based on my my uh, um, you know very brief analysis. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 desktop study this morning. Uh, most of these universities uh, that have a dual PhD scheme that administer dual PhD, they do have okay information on a dedicated website. Right. So I believe uh, this is something that. Uh, 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 faculty should should have in place uh, in order to to support a dual PhD, and also it will be very very good. It will be nice to have, uh, you know, a success story showcase success stories, for example, uh, of dual PhD completion. Perhaps faculty of science can have a dedicated website and showcase from uh, from Halija. Okay, uh, uh, you know, a uh, 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 student who completed a uh, uh, PhD. Uh, at Japan, I believe, and France, for example, all right, uh, so that uh, this can actually motivate uh, students yeah? uh, and also students, our uh, 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 potential dual PhD students can have access to this 
uh, uh, dual PhD graduates can ask for the questions, for example. All right, and also uh, it is not just uh, showcase success stories, but perhaps whatever uh, seminar or webinar conducted by the the, uh, the faculty or the department or at the institutional level by ADEC can also be linked uh, to this uh, uh, website. So, um, well, uh, that's all, uh, Dr. Azar, about uh, you know uh, the three, uh, you know. Uh, uh, faculty support that I uh, could think of, yeah, uh, that we, if we can agree to have this as a checklist, okay, for, for faculties, all right. So this, of course, can, need to be further, you know, uh, explored, okay, on how best, okay, whether it can be done by faculty or perhaps it can be done at the central or the institutional level where this can be hosted uh, by AASC for, AASC, for example, or any uh, relevant, or perhaps IRO, or perhaps PNCI's office. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, now I, I can see that we have our, you know, penolo uh, pendaftar, uh, 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 maybe some few students here, uh, uh, but more lecturers here coming. All right. Because it takes a few months to process a dual PhD application, and perhaps now it is this time if, let's say, supervisors are very interested. Okay, to do dual, okay, you have a candidate, for example, all right, especially candidate yang memang dah ada scholarship, yeah, supervisors can be more pr proactive, all right, uh, get the right partner, get the right supervisors, getting financial assistance, navigating the paperwork, belajar apa yang perlu, arrange the logistic, so it can be done today. Okay, uh, when you now have a candidate, for example, to be supervised, perhaps this can be extended, uh, ask the, uh, I mean, Ask the candidate, okay, offer the candidate, for example, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, opp uh, the opportunity to do dual. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So this is what I would like to share uh, with you all. Uh, a few, a few, a few photos. Okay. Uh, my my experience in uh, in uh, chairing a session. Okay, for dual PhD. What I what would like to say here is that we are giving the student a really a social support. Okay, for the student uh, uh, during the students' viva uh, voce. Uh, so this was actually in France, okay, in Toulouse. Um, <clears throat> all right, where uh, uh, during that time, uh, um, because our examination panel to Bersai, we, we need to have this, um, uh, the chairperson, we need to have the uh, TDIT, right? We need to have the internal examiner, Okay, uh, and also we, 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 we have the secretariat, yeah. So, uh, and uh, the, uh, the partner universities, okay, would like uh, the candidate, uh, because at the end of the, of the, uh, of the uh, program, the candidate was uh, in France, yeah, was in France. So, ideally, uh, the Viva Voce should be there. Okay, so the support that we gave to the candidate was that the whole team went to uh, went to France. Yeah, so uh, went to France uh, and uh, uh, there were two chairs chairing the session. Okay, the Viva Voce examination was conducted uh, with uh, we have two two uh, two uh, two panels. Okay, two set of panels, but the examination uh, process is done only once. Okay, so uh, these are the two chairs. All right. Uh, chairperson, sorry, not chairs, chairperson. Okay, and then these are all the uh, uh, examiners. The examiners are there. Okay, right. So the examiners, you can see we brought in the internal examiner, the Timbalan Dekan Ijaza Tinggi, the AR there. Okay, and this is one support that I would like to mention, not just on the social, social support, but the support is also a standard, okay, to get in, uh, you know, various parties to actually sponsor, okay, the, the uh, I mean, uh, giving financial assistance lah, to make sure that everybody is there, okay, uh, during the Viva Voce, all right, okay. <clears throat> okay, we also, uh, uh, the um, French embassy, the ambassador, okay, uh, give support uh, in, in, in terms of um, flight tickets, okay, to the supervisor to be there. Right, so the supervisor is there here, Prof. Caradine. Okay, uh, and so it was arranged in such a way that 
uh, the external, uh, sorry, the internal uh, examiner and also the deputy dean of Ijazah Tinggi, okay, they they uh, they uh, they went to Europe. I was not sure where, maybe UK. Uh, meet their international partner first for collaboration, and then flew to uh, uh to to France, okay, for the Viva Voce. So it was arranged in such a way that I mean, this is what I said one form of support where we, where we have a dedicated supervisory team and also uh, you know uh, faculty okay giving support to the candidate for the examination process it's not just you know handling the examination process there but flying in all the examination the panel of examiners uh, to uh, uh, to France right so uh, I would like to show here, okay, uh, our our staff here, all right, arranging, uh, bringing in uh, 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 the ambassador okay, uh, in Malaysia uh, to IPS during that time because he was also interested, okay, to participate, uh, uh, no, to 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 participate as audience uh, for the Viva Voce. Okay, all right. So the last photo here, you see, and in the end. Okay, the timbalan dekat ijazah tinggi pun ada, the supervisor, the internal examiner, okay, and then the chairperson here, and also the uh, the AR. All right. Okay, so I believe yeah after that okay a more I believe after that engineering has more uh a PhD students I think coming from this university here yeah, from from France, uh we we are going to have Prof Halija later on talking more about this definitely. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Azza, Dr. Azza. Thank you, Prof. Abriza. It was a pleasure listening to the whole story and, and tips and facilitation ideas that um, faculties can adopt, yeah, Prof. Um, uh, I'm not sure if uh, you have addressed the questions on the chat section. We have the... Um, one from Dr. Ong. Do the, do the student need to apply for dual PhD program? So there's a yes there. So I think yes. that's answered. That's already answered. Yes, it yes. Uh, the students may apply uh, 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 together when the candidate apply for PhD. Uh, and I understand that the, the student can also apply in the first six months. Okay, you are registered. Uh, for PhD and then in the first six months you can also go for dual find the opportunities to do for dual and then apply if the students has reached um, above six months how does that work prof is there I mean is the possibility still there to do a dual if they have registered for the PhD but have exceeded six months without the dual PhD part is there possibility to upgrade or to change into a dual PhD? Change to dual PhD? Yes. No, meaning that it will be converted to dual PhD. Uh -huh. But above uh -huh. six months, still okay? If, if the duration of uh, candidature is already exceeded six months. Okay, you, you see, uh, when everything has been arranged, all right, then you get the funding not that have, have things that have been arranged, yeah, and then you will register for dual PhD. You apply, you apply first dual PhD, and I see. Okay, so uh, the agreement has reached. Uh, the agreement has reached Senate, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Puan Azian, perhaps might. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a, a question for Puan Azian yeah, also because, later. Yeah, because it takes time actually to come up with the uh, with the MOA. Mm -hmm. There's one can, more from Dr. Ong. Can the existing PhD candidate apply? Okay, I think this is the same question yes, as that yes, I asked. Yes, can, can. Can, the answer is yes, yeah. Dr. Ong. Yes. But one thing you have, please then do not forget, because for PhD, for, for, for dual PhD, there is a candidature period that must be agreed by both parties. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah? Okay, so um, next question we have from Lokesh. Dr. Lokesh or Ms. Lokesh, do the faculty need to have an approved dual PhD program? Um, partly has been addressed in session one, which has to do with the MOA or MOU, but perhaps Prof. Abriza or maybe later Pan Azian wants to address that. Yes. 
Puan Azian would be the best person to address that. Okay, so we'll keep that for later, yeah, uh, Ms. Lokesh. Um, Dr. Muhammad Irshad, I believe, at which point in time do students need to apply for a dual PhD program before submitting an application or after getting an offer letter? Okay, all this, I guess it's best for Puan Academic. Azian to address later, right yes. after this. Academic right. management, yeah. Yes, yes. So right after this, we'll have Prof. Uh, Puan Azian to, to help us out with this um, logistics um, issues. Um, I think uh, we can we can conclude Prof. Abriza's uh, part. Yeah, thank you so much, Prof. Abriza, for your sharing. I will now invite... Thank you, Azza. Thank, thank you, Dr. Prof. Azza. I will now invite uh, Puan Azian. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Puan Azian uh, is our Senior Principal Assistant Registrar and Section Head of Examination and Graduation Section, AASCUM. So ADEC and AASC have been very good friends. Specifically, Puan Azian has collaborated uh, in a few projects with us, including e-proctoring, exam roadshow, and many others. So this is one of it now. Puan Azian, I Thank invite you. you to start. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Naza. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank for having me uh, to the discussion. Well, after listening to Prof. Yo and uh, from Abiza, the tips and uh, the fundamentals and whatnot, it's time for me to share with you um, the processes. I, I, I can see that uh, Many of, the, many of the viewers here is longing to know how do we go about to establish the, the program. Well, uh, in my um, slides, okay, I'm uh, not sure if I have some problems here. Well, I have been uh, in this uh, postgraduate methods or uh, administration uh, since 2000, 2000 yeah. So based um, throughout my experience, as I've mentioned, as, as what uh, Prof. Abiz mentioned, that now this, this unique program was implemented uh, as early as 2008. <laughs> and it was in initiated by uh, Institute of Graduate Studies, and we can, as we known before as IPS. And, uh, at that point of time, IPS functioned as a multidisciplinary uh, academic entity and is the main um, entity, academic entity, um, handling or managing the this such collaborations. And we started the collaboration. Okay. Uh, we, at that point of time, uh, IPS uh, collaborated with the uh, few renowned host university and established an MOU where among of the earliest uh, host university to collaborate it with UM for this particular unique program is, uh, as I mentioned or displayed on my slides here. Uh, of course, the one that uh, I mentioned, uh, National Polytechnic and Toulouse, France and University of Sydney, Australia. And after that, um, next, uh, in the year, in the, in the year uh -huh. of 2018, um, we have restructuring yeah. okay. of the Deputy Vice Chancellor's uh, portfolio where the by this management is okay. decentralized to the higher degree okay. of okay. this. Okay. Uh -huh. and we still did, uh, to date, uh, if I can share some of the statistics yeah, in a dual PhD. Okay, this is okay. Uh, as of 12 April, we have a number of active students uh, collaborate with almost 13 universities, post university. Uh, as mentioned here, it's already expanding. And we hope that the number of uh, MOUs and also the number of our collaborators uh, expand in the near future, as what 
mentioned by Prof. Abiza, with all the supports and with all the tips she's given to us, just now we should aim for more. Yeah, because uh, as you can see, she's mentioned about the benefits and also with which um, our KPI set by the university in terms of internalization methods. Um, um, since, I mean, in a year uh, from 2000, uh, for the past 14 years, we have produced uh, at least 24 um, grad, uh, graduates. We had six, grad, six graduates graduated uh, last session, last convocation session. And um, among, of the, among of the faculties that produced quite a number, a uh, high number of graduates coming from the engineering and the science faculty. We hope that, uh, you know, like uh, as mentioned by Prof. Riza, uh, do not confine only to this uh, science and technology uh, area, whereby you can, we can actually expand and find ways many of other uh, area of expertise so that uh, these programs we can market as what uh, Abila mentioned just now. This is, a, this is something that we can promote uh, to make to people outsiders or our own students or the international students to come and register with us. Yeah. So this is a few uh, area or specialization that uh, relate to the MOUs that currently we have. Okay. Now, this is the, what uh, it's all about, about uh, comparison between the joint degree and dual degree. And what do you mean by, what do we mean by dual degree is that uh, we have, we have two programs in the same or nearly same field uh, to establish or uh, to collaborate and it's much easier for the students to, uh, to, to, to expand their research activities using both um, universities and facilities and support. And at the end of the day, uh, it leads to the complement of two schools from the uh, both institutions. Okay? It is very important to have, I mean, it's uh, quite attractive to some, to all of us, having two schools within a one uh, same uh, duration, two schools. Later, I will show you some of how the schools look like. Okay, uh, this is what we have produced and so what we see. And um, for the work program, we need only to produce one thesis. And as what you are seeing on the pictures just now, uh, both party, both home and post university is hosting of uh, uh, same viva and only deliberately or um, assessing one thesis. So that's to that extent, uh, the viva will say that we conducted. And um, of course, um, the graduation, uh, graduation requirement. The student needs to comply or um, has to follow what the academic rules and regulations by both universities. If I were in it, I, I can see that I'm sure that everyone is fully aware what is our requirement, uh, graduation requirement. They have to follow um, and without any assumption. And at the same time, they have to also follow what is. Uh, set by the post university. So, uh, okay, the next uh, slides, uh, this is the important thing, uh, I guess everyone is been looking. Okay, for us to embark or to start with the dual program, the student has to register with the general. Of course, prior to that, uh, it's good to for the students or the potential supervisor, the potential students or the faculty themselves uh, can explore or find or search and uh, opportunities to establish this collaboration. 
it will be much easier later on, especially when drafting the MOU. Okay, so uh, as a first step, is faculty, potential student, students, and the supervisors have to uh, fully, uh, fully understand what their aim and uh, list down uh, their aim or their uh, intention for establishing an MOU. Then later on, uh, when everything is uh, in place, they have to send, they have to uh, provide in a, a, a formal template that can be um, uh, can obtained from the uh, legal, uh, from the IO office. And after putting everything, uh, stipulate everything in the MOUs, okay, it should be uh, vetted by legal unit uh, because to some extent, uh, there might be, you know, um, some legal issues in case uh, uh, any of the parties mentioned in the MOU uh, breach any of the clause mentioned. So legal unit is also important. And this is sometimes will take a lot of, not to say a lot, it will take a longer time because we have to clearly uh, read line by line and interpret it in a such a way that every uh, parties is uh, fully aware what are the, the, their responsibilities and the rules in the group. Okay. Then after everything is settled and everybody, everybody is satisfied with whatever that's written in the MOU, we will hold up a uh, what we call it a signing ceremony. This is where uh, I can say that it's officially uh, the starting of the official uh, event that this uh, group of people is embarked on the dual, dual track. Uh, next, um, the third and the fourth, of course, is only the, the um, some documentations, uh, people work that have been done, and you have to go to a certain level, you have to get approval from, uh, of course, our Senate, and then right up to the, uh, our KPT or MOG, then this uh, is a mandatory. Uh, we have to we have to follow and also comply to the, the, the timelines given. But now you going to the second phase. Yeah, this is where uh, uh, the other support, yeah, the other services uh, office that support the students. In the beginning, the students and the faculty work together. And along the line, uh, other uh, my office is uh, AASC to facilitate the student in terms of the life cycle. Okay, how do you go about uh, registering and and then after that uh, pursuing the candidature uh, and uh, it, um, to make sure that the candidature is um, uh, registered every semester, every semester and within. The time, maximum time, maximum candidature period that they given to the student. So, coming to the sixth step, yeah, this is where is also uh, the gist uh, of the successful of the student. I, I believe if you, uh, after, after what uh, Ariza provide us all the tips and whatnot to support that. The monitoring process uh, of this candidate's progress which will be much easier. And they, they, I totally agree with what Abiza. Uh, it's not uh, easy for a student to go through the, the life in, uh, in this dual program because they have to, uh, the student has to communicate both parties and having all this uh, paperwork and they want to do their, I mean, continue with their research in such a very demand, uh, requires tremendous patience and a lot of uh, time planning, time management, uh, money, money matters planning, uh, uh, yeah, money matters. This, this is uh, the, 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 the period that most of the students find is very, very tough. Uh, but I believe 
from the previous past experience, the students um, succeed, uh, even though some of them um, requires more than um, their maximum. They have they managed to graduate extended uh, during the extended uh, with the extension of education. Uh, we also facilitate that so that at the end of the day, the students get their degree. Uh, later part, the part when the final phase is of course uh, the graduation, and this is the best moment. Okay, it's a uh, worthwhile having the student. I mean, the student feel satisfied. They got managed to get two schools, and we are happy. They are happy. So everyone happy, right? Uh, that's then that's the end. So this is the workflow that um, everyone. Or faculties and every faculty. Uh, next slide is okay. This is how the MOU's uh, documents look like. I, I I believe that this is what I can share. Where this is the important uh, the important to have an MOU uh, because this is like a contract. Okay, a contract for the student to. Really see what is mentioned, what is the due to the do beside the uh, procedures and the uh, um, Among of the things that mentioned in this MOU is, of course, uh, who is the home university and who is the post university. And then the next one would be uh, the agreement of fees, okay? where um, here is a little bit of the registration um, point or matters that the student should follow. Uh, then, uh, then we have the supervision uh, section here where both supervisors or supervisor or supervisors from both universities is responsible to supervise the student throughout the program. And next one is I am showing you that, uh, of course, they have to oblige or comply with the academic regulation on for both universities. The last one, the uh, next is something that also mentioned about the award, the complement of the degree. Okay, this is uh, here we will spell out uh, a few things, uh, spell out a few keywords uh, that have to reflect a school as a, a, an identity of the school, um, which carries um, as a dual school. Okay, it's not an ordinary school, so here we can. I specified whether our name to be written on the schools or not. As for UM, we insist to have both names on our schools. But uh, to the host university, it depends whether they, they want to include our, uh, our university names or not. But mostly, they agree to have. Yeah. Next. Uh, definitely, in this uh, in, the, in this uh, MOU, we should have this content that tells out about the financial arrangements. And here is the place where we specify uh, the, the, the 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 items of money matters that we support or uh, we can support or not support. All right, uh, this is very important, and we need to have. A very brief discussion or serious discussion. What are the things that the university uh, post university covers? What are the uh, post university covers? Um, we hope that we can, uh, we hope that the host university can facilitate us in many ways, especially the, 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 the funding, perhaps uh, exemption from. Fees, okay, the cushion fees, 
uh, and then some uh, provide some facilities in terms of uh, have whatever kind of uh, allowance. The, some some of the generous uh, university they do uh, uh, provide uh, personal loans or personal uh, allowances. It depends on how effective uh, the faculty um, um, have a serious discussion with them. Like this. All right. The next one, because this is the tour of we have this tabu dua to doctoran, but this tabu dua to doctoran is to sponsor those who are already existing uh, from the year of the faculty, uh, prior to the faculty still continuing and to support them. Next. So this is the some of the uh, this is what I have uh, mentioned just now. Is specifically indicate the name of both universities in our school, but uh, the cemetery remains uh, uh, our own university cemetery. As for the host university, it can uh, the host university. Uh, it's what I can. Gather from the students. We have, uh, I can show you this from NICE, and the other one is from our collaborative department. For further readings or for further understanding about the Garis Paduan or our rules and regulations, I have listed here um, quite a few. Okay, we have here. And uh, we feel free to, to click on this uh, website or this uh, link that can provide you the, the what the what uh, how you are about to embark on to program. And lastly, all right, these are the support teams that I think it's important to, uh, to, to everyone bear in mind the support from the faculty members across the, of the, the higher degree office and the cabinet supervisors. As for the central, uh, I have three, I listed three officers here. And Mr. Harir is uh, managing the Abu PhD. And Mr. Muhammad Nasimdin will be facilitating uh, for helping us with the candidature matter and for the candidature matter is one as well. And with that, that's the end of my talk. And I just a little bit of what I shared and also through my experience and the question. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you so much, Puan Azian. We have a list of questions for Nazian on the chat section. Okay. Would you like me to read it for you? Uh, okay. Okay. Or if there's any um, any of the lecturers who wrote down the question would like to switch on your microphone and and um, ask a question in person, pun, um, we welcome you. Yeah? Um, I'll read from uh, one easy one from Dr. Hairul Anwar. How about to revive an expired MOA? Oh. That's that's one. To revive. Ah, if you already have an MOA, but it's maybe um expired, so mm -hmm. uh, we might wanna revive it in order to pursue or to, to move into this dual PhD program. We have to uh so for for us to revive uh, expired MOU and we have. To uh, start it all over again, okay. Uh, perhaps I I all here with me can support me with uh, any uh, any any kind of uh, answers that can support my answers. There's no way to. I mean, the only way is to just uh, go through again the whole process. 
uh, you can uh, start all over again with the uh, driving uh, see what are the terms that flash, that start out in the MOU uh, if there is any uh, that needs to, to, to replace or to, uh, to add on and then we have to send to IO and we will sit down again with the real units and proceed to form sense of the Okay, okay. So that's one. Um, uh, perhaps uh, Prof. Hyrule yeah, would like to ask uh, IRO also um, how how that can be done apart from uh, ASC. Yeah? Yeah. There was yeah. one from uh, Dr. Muhammad Irshad. At mm -hmm. which point in time, this was asked uh, earlier, at which point in time do students need to apply for a dual PhD program? before okay. submitting an application or after getting an offer letter uh it should be uh, after getting uh, offer letter okay so they apply yeah. for it first yeah, it must be a registered student then only we can uh, proceed to the uh, MOU okay so that's what i think that's what prof abriza mentioned about the yeah. 6 months yeah. grace period earlier it, yeah. can, it can be uh, longer than that because you know sometimes it take a longer time to reach an uh, 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 um, uh, agreement. Correct. Mm, okay. Um, continuing from that question, is the application process the same as applying for the normal PhD program yes. through Maya? I, I suppose it's the same, yes? yes? Mm. Okay. Um, one question from Dr. Lokesh. Do the faculty need to have an approved dual PhD program in advance? But, uh, not necessarily, because it all totally depends on the MOUs. Okay, so it's the MOU that. Yeah, that, yeah. The MOUs is the most important thing. And also okay. the collaborators agree to have an MOU with us. Okay. This one is from Dr. Rizal Baharum. Um, potential dual PhD candidate are keen to apply for JPA or MARA loans to support the tuition fees and the cost of living abroad. Any guide for this? Oh, then uh, you can just uh, ask the student to come to us so we can guide them because it's, it, they have to uh, follow the normal procedures how to apply for JPA and MARA. Okay. Okay. Um, there's one from Dr. Wan Abdul Al Qadr. Is there a template for successful MOA document associated with dual PhD program that is approved by the Office of Higher Degree? Let's say from both uh, from both party. Let's say MOA on of dual PhD. Uh, LJM, one, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can re we can refer to IRO's office. They okay. can uh, learn or maybe they can provide or at least share with them. How okay, so IRO's office, yeah? Correct. Okay, so MOA, MOU, IRO's office. Correct. Um, and, uh, okay, another one. Yes, from Dr. Mamash. I think it's a follow-up question. If we were to find out more about the dual PhD program on, on offer and its details, any landing page we could refer to from AASC side and on the website, UF's website, anything? Uh, at the moment, uh, like what? Uh, at the moment, we don't have. Uh, after the, uh, I mean, after the dissolution of uh, uh, IPS, mm -hmm. before that, prior to two thousand eighteen, we do have in our website IPS because IPS is the uh, uh, the academic entity to hold this uh, manage But after two thousand eighteen onwards. We have decentralized it to the faculty, and that is why Prof. Abiza is suggesting that the website is important, and faculty should uh, should should, should uh, make an effort to attract to the through the website because from there they can actually display uh, can uh, can can expose all the UM academic expertise in the faculty. It's much easier for the students to identify the student's prizes and then from there they can <coughs> okay thank you so much perhaps the faculty should uh, take uh, uh, the tips that given by Visa is something that to move on to move in as a moving forward yeah yeah 
Um, is there any other questions that would uh, any of the audience would like to switch on your microphone and ask? So anything on MOU, MOA, refer to IRO. IRO, correct. Yes. Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, yes. yes, please. Uh, basically, I'm from Pakistan, and my question is, is University Malaya interested to sign MOU with Pakistani public universities for PhD candidates? Uh, what about, uh, what are their views about this idea? So we are encouraged. We would like to uh, have more and more uh, collaboration. Uh, perhaps you can um, uh, send, your, I mean, send your intention uh, to the uh, Professor Yu, who get our first speaker. From there, we can take you and lead towards the MOU. Okay, Prof. Yong is the best person to approach. Okay, we can. Uh, we uh, we have no. Uh, I mean, we are glad to have you uh, anywhere from everywhere, as long as both uh, home and host can collaborate and. Have a nice successful uh, at the end of the day. Can you share, please, your email address? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, we, um, in, yeah, we can type it in the chat section. Link. Chat. Um, just just okay. look out for thank that you. over there. Thank you so much. Really, thank you. Yeah. Um, dual PhD program. Upon uh, there's another question here. Okay. Isn't it? Effective program for international or local students. Does the website needs to clearly specify the guide? I think this has been addressed. Website that clearly specify or guide the students before joining. Yes, I, Faculty I, I, can get students easily. Yeah, yes. yeah. I think that's what Paul yes. Azian just mentioned. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. um, if there is no other questions, please be reminded that. Uh, we have our attendance form link and the feedback form link on the chat section that you would like that you we encourage you to, um, to fill up in order for us to provide the certificates also, uh, also yeah um Puan Azian, any other tips for those supervisors uh, well, who um, may have a student I, 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 in I, I, mind emphasize that uh, you know um, it's not a, uh, so you need a lot of encourage and support because the the, 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 the students might face in quite a, a stressful time so if the supervisors can support uh, morally or in terms of financial assistance they would be more motivated to complete the the the, the, the program i mean their uh, studies within I mean, less than uh, yeah, less. Okay. Yes, we can. I, I, I guess the IDEC will provide you all the details. Dr. Aza, you're muted. Sorry. Thank you, Umu. Uh, uh, thank you. That, um, I can end my. Yes, thank you so much Puan Azen, for sharing your perspective from ASC. It's um, a lot of logistics that has been clarified from your side. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Okay, um, to the audience, uh, our um, Puan Ina from, from um, Prof. Yong's office has put up the email address and contact details of Prof. Yong Zulina for those of you who are interested to um, write an email to her. Okay. Um, if you maybe we can request the organizer to also put up uh, ASC contact detail and Prof uh, Abriza's contact detail as well. Okay, so it's three thirty four now. We have our final and most precious speaker, Prof Khalija. Um, I hope Prof Khalija is around. Yeah, he's he's ready. Yes, I would like to. Um, it would be an honor for me to invite and uh, introduce Professor Dr Khalija Awang. Uh, she's a prolific researcher in the area of natural products with strong focus on pharmacognosy. She begins her career as a lecturer at UM after completing her PhD in 1993 from the University of. Uh, 
René Picard, Paris, France. She has since co-authored 300 referent, uh, referred articles ISI and supervised over 70 postgraduate students, both domestic and international. Prof Khalija is a researcher and the coordinator of an international research program that is the International French Malaysian Natural Products Laboratory and an educator. She received recognition from her dedication and perseverance through several reputable awards from uh, such as from the top research scientist Malaysia TRSM in 2014, a fellow member of the Academy of Science Malaysia in 2018, and recognition as one of the UM researchers listed as the world's top 2% scientists 2020 and 2021. And the Japanese Society for the Promotion of Science and Japanese Universities, JSPS. She has clearly established herself as a role model for young Malaysians and women in science. On the 17th of January 2022, that is earlier this year, just recently, French Ambassador to Malaysia, His Excellency Mr. Roland Galahargu, has presented her another award. I won't be able to pronounce this name of the award, Prof Khalija. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, let's mention it's the Knight in the Order of Academic Palms. If if I if I get that translation correct, <laughs> apologies if it's not correctly translated. This prestigious Order de Palms uh, Academic Award was initially granted by Napoleon I to honour professors and teachers, to honour their contributions to global and French education and culture, making it one of the French Republic's oldest civic decorations. Prof. Uh, Dr. Khalija Awang has conferred this award as a recognition by the French government for her intense contribution in the bridging of Malaysian and French scientific research and mentoring of young scientists and postgraduates, be it masters and PhD. She has demonstrated that mutual respect, trust and understanding among scientists and academics can build a very powerful bond of friendship and diplomacy between two nations that are very different in nature and culture. I look forward to listening from you, Prof Khalija. The floor is yours. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, salam sejahtera to all. Uh, Naga, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Terima kasih Azza for the very kind introduction. Can you see my slides now? Yes. You can, eh? Yes. Okay. So uh, today I'm going to share our experience actually. I say our because we work in a group. Okay, we work in a group. Uh, our group is the uh, International Branch Malaysian uh, Laboratory. Uh, and also known locally as the Pytu Lab, simply the Pytu Lab, yeah? Okay, the Potita program that uh, we have started in 2012, okay? So I will share a little bit on our experience, inshallah, yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay, first, uh, let us see again the meaning of Potita, yeah? So a COVID-19 is a PhD program where a research candidate is jointly enrolled at two universities and spend time at each university. Okay. But the special thing about it is that the student will receive PhD certificates from both universities. Okay. So they will have it from, for example, from University of Malaya and also from the other university from France, for example, Ecole Polytechnique or Paris Sud and so on. Yeah. Okay. Now. Uh, uh, let me share with you first how we come about to this, uh, to have been students under this program, yeah? So actually, uh, it all started maybe 30 years back from a relationship that we had from 30 years back, okay? We have a French Malaysian collaboration uh, between Jabatan Kimia and ECSN, Institut de Chimie des Substances Naturelles in France, which is under the umbrella of CNRS, yeah? So you will see CNRS, the word CNRS, because it's the umbrella of those institutes, research institutes in France, okay? So then uh, we fortify our uh, collaboration, the French uh, government, okay? They provide the scholarships to the PhDs and so on, back then, back then before year 2000, yeah? So I was the first uh, PhD graduate and then followed by our dear friend, Allah Yarham, Dr. Khalid Muhammad, who was a lecturer in pharmacy department back in the year 2000, yeah? 
And since year 2000 until year 2012, we send many uh, young scientists for trainings in France for the duration of one to three months. Okay, so most of my masters and PhD students get the chance to go over there. Okay, to have training so that they have the exposure uh, on how the uh, top labs, uh, top laboratories work, and then this uh, experience will make them more mature and more uh, a better scientist. Yeah. Okay. So and then in twenty ten, actually, we were thinking of how to fortify back, uh, further our co collaboration. And then uh, uh, our group and the embassy and my partner in CNRS, okay, in ECSN, we thought of having a co uh student, okay? So it started with our student, Muhammad Nurul Azmi, who is now uh, a lecturer, yeah, uh, a very uh, prolific lecturer, uh, researcher yeah, in USM, yeah, USM, Muhammad Nurul Azmi. And then we have a second and third candidate, which is Ms. Uh, Mrs. Shelly Gapir, and Miss Azrina has been with you, okay? So that's how it all started, okay? Okay, it started from our friendship, our collaboration together, okay? Okay, this is Azmi, uh, I shared here, you see he has two uh, PhD certificate, okay? Uh, so one from Polytechnic and the other one from University of Malaya, okay? So his title of uh, research is Isolation and Identification of Cyclic Polyketides from Indian Drug in Jana Gamble. Uh, inhibitors and approaches towards the synthesis of kinjanins. Okay, so in this one, the Malaysian part is the natural product part. This part. The French part is the synthesis and also the biological activity using the uh, apoptotic, anti-apoptotic uh, proteins, BCLXL, BAC, and MCL1. Okay, so he went there as me before he started his uh, cotitel uh, registration, yeah. He went there in France for training for a few months. So he is exposed to, to the, to the uh, situation in France, yeah? And he knows the supervisors already, yeah? So he went there, okay? okay? And then only after he is okay with everything, and then we discuss with him about the, the uh, title of research, then only we embark on the potential program because we know it's not going to be easy, yeah? The most, most importantly, it's the... Uh, uh, financial uh, assistance, yeah? That's the main problem, okay? So the second one is Shelly Gapil Yamas, who has just finished writing her thesis and who's now waiting to uh, to have her viva, but she met uh, a problem, which I will discuss later, yeah? Later, uh, during this talk, yeah? So Shelly Gapil Yamas, photosynthesis and pharmacodulation uh, of natural primitive charcoals, inhibitors, and anti apoptotic proteins. So he stayed, she stayed two years in France because the bulk of her work is uh, synthesis. The natural product part will be done in Malaysia, okay? It's done in Malaysia, okay? And the writing also. The third one, Hazrina, she is uh, still doing her research, okay? But she's at the uh, final stage of her research. Uh, the research was a little bit halted because of COVID because she has to do some biological activities whereby she cannot go into the lab for two years, yeah? So now she's reviving back the uh, biological activity part, yeah? Yeah. And the phytochemical part is towards uh, the end already, inshallah, yeah? So she uh, she and Shelly Gapil, okay, the partner university is Paris Sakli, Paris Sud, okay, which is also an associate uh, of uh, Polytechnic, yeah? Uh, Polytechnic of France, yeah? Okay. Now, this is an example of an MOA, okay? So usually we have the university name. Okay, MOA is a prerequisite before we can have our, before the student can register uh, into the co tutel program, yeah? So first we have the university. So in the case of ASMI, equal polytechnic, okay? University Malaya. The name of the candidate, okay? Muhammad Nurul ASMI. All the rulings, registration, rules, fees, insurance, this has to be agreed upon between the two universities. They all must agree upon this, uh, this uh, structure, yeah? And then the name of the supervisors, yeah? Okay, uh, in France, Ivan Six and Mark Vitodong, okay? And in Malaysia, myself and Allah Yarham, Muhammad, yeah? Yeah, okay. 
And then we also mentioned the duration. Usually it's three years, but it can be continued. Okay, this is where we we forget when when it takes more than three years, we need to revive the the agreement. This is where the part that I will tell you that the problem that we face with our second candidate action. Yeah. So, but for Azmi, it's okay because it took him three and a half years, and because he doesn't have to register again because it's three and a half years. Okay. So the duration. Uh, although it's more than three years, the agreement is okay, still okay, because he doesn't need to register anymore. Yeah. Now, and that exam structure, whether to be done in Malaysia or in France, and how we're going to do it. Okay. So for Azmi, we had it in France because he was the first candidate, and also Polytechnic is the pride of, of France. So it's it's uh, an honor for us to be able to be there and attain a, a PhD uh, by now. Yeah. So it's a good experience, even for all the UM officials. So the dean, the Eastern dean were there, yeah? Alhamdulillah, lah, yeah? it was a very nice occasion. And then they get the certificates from both universities. Okay, Language of thesis is English, but the preamble is in uh, French. Yeah, And, and Bahasa Melayu, lah, and Bahasa Malaysia. Yeah? Okay, so we get it all signed. It has to be signed, yeah? signed. And this is for Shelly, okay? So for Shelly, also the same, okay? Uh, okay, so the same, yeah? It has to be signed, okay? So usually in a, in a quality program, we must have uh, expertise in both parts of the, uh, both universities, yeah? For example, in my case, in our case, most of the Malaysian expertise is the uh, natural products and also collection of plants, preparation of plants, extraction, and natural products, meaning the identification, isolation, and so on. And usually the French party is biological activity and synthesis. Okay. But some biological activity is also done in Malaysia. But the most uh, what you call that up to uh, to the uh, the new uh, for the, for example activities, for example, COVID activities, yeah? some using uh, some very special proteins. So we have it in France, so we do it in France, okay? But cytotoxicity, antioxidant, we can do it in Malaysia, for example, yeah? So here, we can see that expertise is natural product in French, the, uh, for the France synthesis, for the case of ASME, yeah? 18 months in France and 18 months in Malaysia. For Shelly, uh, two years in France, one year in Malaysia, and so is for Hazrina, yeah? So far as enough, because there are a lot more things to learn. Okay, there are many new things that they would, uh, that we would like them to learn and acquire, and then uh, transfer uh, the knowledge to the Malaysians. Inshallah. Yeah. So and also it's very important that the students to be closely in touch, yeah, with Campus France, yeah, uh, which is the um, the association that's that's in charge of the postgraduate students, yeah? And the Malaysian students, they are supported financially back then, eh, back then by UM Bright Spark program, yeah, for Azmi. And for Azrina and uh, Shelly, it was by dual tabung PhD. But I understand that for the new candidates, we don't have uh, support from dual tabung, yeah? So we have to think of something, we have to think of something else, yeah? Now, Kotutel has a lot of benefits. For me, it is it is a very uh, important program and it's a very enriching program. It enriches both countries, both institutions, and the students also. And of course, the supervisors, yeah? Okay. So why? Because better networking opportunities, yeah? Opportunities to be larger academic network and establish more contact for us, lah, yeah? Supervisors, especially in university, yeah? Access to research funding and facilities not available at home university. Okay, so uh, for example, the grants that is used for their research in France is supported by the French uh, government, eh, by the French government, and uh, some uh, financial support from the French embassy to get for the students yeah, to top up whatever they get from the mission partner. Yeah, improve social and communication skill for us, the supervisors and students. Yeah, students and also the officials of both. Universities, how to deal with uh, people with different culture, uh, work ethics, and work work style, eh? the style of work, and so on. Yeah, and strengthening the research collaboration. Of course, uh, you usually have to start with something with a collaboration. This is to my point of view. Yeah, again, transferable skills. Yes, more interdisciplinary experience. Okay, so this is where the students will gain, and then when they come back to Malaysia, they will share with all the other 
yang saintis. Especially in my group, the party that group. Yeah? Okay. Uh, however, okay, there are always obstacles. Yeah? It's not easy. Some of them come to me crying, you know. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. And as supervisors, we have to try to understand their problems. Yeah, It's not easy. But it is very, very, very uh, 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 something that's very, very fruitful. Yeah? Very, uh, it's worth it. It's very worth it. The tears is worth it. It's worth the tears. Yeah. Okay. Difference in culture and environment. Okay, students need time to adapt to the language, weather, transport system, supermarket, shop opening, and everything. Even though I've sent them for training, they still have some problems. Eh? Even though I've sent them for training, because in three months, too, the training is very short. So it's not the same. Yeah? Everything is already set for them. The lodging and everything is already set for them. Okay? When they go there for two years or one year, one and a half years, they have to set, find everything themselves. Yeah? Okay. Number two, financial assistance. Okay? So I find that this is very important. It has to be stable. That means we must have a stable financial assistance for the student, okay? If not, it's going to be very difficult for them, especially in Europe, yeah? everything is very expensive, okay? 1,000 euro is already 4,000 ringgit, 4,600 ringgit, yeah? Uh, time, time difference, synchronization of programs, differences in the academic calendar and so on, yeah? For example, we have to understand that uh, between July to September, for them, it's really actually holiday, holiday for everybody. Nothing really works, yeah? Because many of them went for holidays. Although they only go for one month, but because somebody will go for one month, uh, July, the other one will go for August, so there is no uh, flow of information between them, okay? So basically, nothing works during that month, that two months, yeah? So in the in Azmi, Azmi's case, he sent his thesis around June or July. He has to wait until September for the uh, application for, for Viva to be uh, to be pro, to be processed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Challenges during examination. Okay. This not really, but if we want to go to France, okay, we we might have the problem of getting the budget to go there. Yeah. Because we will have four representatives to be there. Yeah. During the time of, of ASME, we have four Malaysians and four French. So four Malaysians would be there plus the student. So usually the student is supported by the embassy. Okay, uh, the embassy is a very, uh, is giving us a very big support and the rest will be supported by UN. Yeah, uh, so searching for the money. Okay, uh, all this while the problem is just that. Uh, okay, the budget. Differences in institutional rules, requirement and arrangements and also, okay, the, the thing that is here that is of concern is publications. Okay, so publish for UM. We need two ISI. Okay, for most of the partner universities, in my case, in our case in France, they, they don't need the publication. So sometimes they don't, they take time to publish because they want to publish in a big journal, right? So they take time. They, they put the studies of two, three students yeah, in one paper, then they go to tier one. Okay, for example, but for us, we cannot. We cannot wait. Okay, so here the supervisor have to be very uh, creative. Lah. So in the case of Azmi, both of his papers is from National Products. During the time of his uh, um, uh, Viva, we cannot wait for the synthesis. Synthesis is coming out, maybe in the near future, you see? Because they wait for results from two, three students, it's their custom, because they want to go into a big paper, yeah? Which is normal, yeah? Which is normal, okay? And then emergency situation, okay, COVID-19. Yeah, this is where we have the problem, okay? I have prob this problem with both Hazrina and uh, Shelly. We realize this problem only when Shelly has finished uh, writing a thesis. We have, uh, uh, we got the uh, external examiners and everything. We want to get ready for her viva. And then we realize that in France, they, she cannot go through it because of the lapse of agreement and because of the payment of the uh, registration and so on. So here is where the problem. But since Shelly is now because of because of two years of COVID, yeah. So now Shelly is on the sixth year already. So it is towards the end already. So we have to prioritize the student first. So because of this, Shelly and Hasrina, we would have to prioritize the student first. So we will ask them to just graduate as the uh, from with the UM regulation, yeah. 
But for the other student, new students, then we can think all this over again, yeah? Especially uh, maybe the time duration of, we have to add in the duration of thesis can be more flexible and if there is emergencies, okay? That the uh, agreement is automatically renewed. We don't have to do it again and again and again because it's the same thing, isn't it? So maybe this we have to think over for our next future co-tutor students, yeah? We learn from all this, yeah? We learn from all this. <laughs> Okay, there's a study by Fouré, Malheur, uh, Botha, Jay, and Stevens yeah, on co-detail program, yeah, the rationale, challenges, and benefits of joint degrees as a new form of doctoral education, which I think is a very, very good program. If you ask me, I, I, I like it very much, but a lot of work, a lot of work for especially the supervisors, but it teaches us to be more open minded, more, uh, what do you call that, exposes us to more, uh, what do you call that, problems for, uh, that we can face, yeah, in the global um, environment, okay, we become more mature, we become better uh, supervisors, become better individuals, actually, okay, and also for the students, yeah, okay, the red colored one, it, uh, it benefits the institution, department, and individual, the blue colored one, Marked in blue, it uh, benefited the uh, benefits the society together with the institution, department, and individual. Yeah, for example, eh, the blue one let's see, yeah to increase the number of PhD students, so it benefits our country, institution, department, and individual. Yeah, the other one to leverage more research grants, funding opportunities. Yes, so it enriches our institution, our country, and also our society. Yeah. And the other one, to capitalize on existing institutional cooperation formalized in a framework agreement, okay? So this is important, yeah? To expand knowledge base and hold qualifications from different institutions. The students are very, very uh, lucky, eh? very fortunate because they can have uh, degrees from both universities. So this is very special, I think. Very, very special, yeah? To share resources and expertise to benefit all parties. Yes, this is also very special. That means we don't keep all the knowledge to ourselves. We share with other people globally at the global level. Uh, not only in Malaysia and not only in France, their knowledge. So now the knowledge is moving from Malaysia to France, from France to Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, challenges. Okay, commitment of key role part players. Yes, sometimes people get tired a little bit because there are problems, yeah. So we have to be very uh, resilient, very resilient, both supervisor and students. What more? The students more, eh? Both students and supervisor. We cannot give up easily, okay? And you must know what is important, what is to prioritize, okay? Uh, what, what is to prioritize? But whatever the priority, number one is student, yeah? And then our university. Okay, regulations and rules, okay? This can be, like, for example, the, the fee structure perhaps can change, for example, yeah? Uh, coming to an agreement, okay? Sharing of resources and expertise. This one, if you already have a collaboration, it is not so much of a problem. I don't face this problem because we are already in collaboration. So we, we, share, we share many things together, yeah? Leveraging more research grants, funding opportunities. Yes, okay. Uh, how to find more research grants sometimes, yeah? Okay, additional expenses. Yes, expenses, especially if you do it in the first world countries, yeah? It can be very, very expensive, yeah? Okay, benefits of joint degree, scientific benefits gain, no doubt, yeah? Enhanced research cooperation, no doubt, yeah? More PhDs enrolled, yes. So if we can have more PhD enrolled, yeah? from all over the world, eh? it's good, it's good, okay? Uh, visibility of science and researcher, standards and quality confirmed, reputation enhanced, of course. I think this is very good for ranking, it helps a lot, yeah? More funding assessed, yes. Ex uh, mutual learning, yes. Course supervision, yes, this is very important, yeah? yeah. Employability enhanced, typical benefits of study abroad. This is basically for the student, more experience for them, they become more mature people and they will become better individuals and it helps them a lot in their future career, yeah? <coughs> tips. Some tips that I think I, I can share with all of you is that we must have a good and balanced MOA between universities. So we must really discuss together, yeah? yeah. But sometimes certain things we do not know until we, we go through the experience, yeah? Like the, uh, the agreement just now that lapsed during COVID, yeah? 
make sure the students are in close contact with Malaysian Embassy. We have to advise them to be in close contact with Malaysian Embassy and Campus France. So in case of emergency, you know, uh, many problems can, so they know where to go, okay? I, I was in France once and we had an experience whereby we have the uh, terrorist bombing in Paris. I was there in Paris with my students, it was done with the French Embassy. So we all work together there, yeah? so inshallah. So this, this is very important so that the students won't get scared. Huh? Uh, Sometimes I got phone calls and say, I, I want to go back. Oh, I want to go back. In <laughs> Sabah, the application. Okay. This is, this is the world. Okay. This is the world. Okay. Uh, build good relationship with research partners, administrators of both universities. Okay. So for me, uh, I keep in touch a lot with UM. Lah, yeah. For my partners, they have to keep in touch with their university administrators. But I cannot. I cannot intervene into their, their, their system. Uh, we have to respect that. We have to have that mutual respect. Yeah? They don't intervene into our system and we do not intervene into their system. Yeah? So embassy, host country and home country, Malaysia. So in Malaysia, the students, okay, all our, all our students, Alhamdulillah, they are, very, they are in very close contact with the French, uh, with the Malaysian embassy. So they join the, all the uh, programs and so on. Yeah? And here, we must always be in close contact with the French embassy. And if you are doing co tutel with uh, England, then with the uh, UK, eh? Australia, Australia, semua itulah. Yeah? We have to do that, the same. I think it's the same. Uh, for suggestion, lah, give some suggestion. Yeah? Provide fund scholarship for students for full study, not only when they were abroad, but for the full study. So we must guarantee them a scholarship yeah? so that the flow of research of their work is not disturbed. For me, co tutel we should give them about four years. Because the time to adapt to different environment, yeah, kadang-kadang, you know, so kadang-kadang it's always like that, yeah. So we have to give them that time. So for me, I think four years is reasonable enough, yeah. Duration of PhD should be three, uh, yes, yes, two years at the host country. Student need time to adapt to the new environment. Small transportation grant for supervisors also, so that we have good relationship between the supervisors, not just ta -ta -ta on email, huh? Huh? So at least one travel grant in two years. So at least one visit or two visits during the duration of uh, the PhD program. Yeah, this is my, my humble suggestion. Yeah? So conclusion, we must always communicate and have respect for each other. Yeah, have balance between being humble, confident and principled. We have to be humble. When we want to make agreement, yeah? we cannot be arrogant, we have to be humble. But we must be confident, we must know that we are confident and we are principled so that we get what we need to get. Huh? Okay. Code Utel served as a quality check, providing information of status of UM as a global university. Okay, so that's why I'm very much uh, for towards this program. Yeah? Final, uh, teamwork is very important. These two are very important. Yeah? We have to work with each other. The student's problem is a problem for, for both uh, supervisors from both sides. Okay? Not just Malaysian, not just French. Yeah? Some, some. Together. Finally, involving two or more institutions across national borders and multiple supervisors in doctoral education, clearly is an added value for student supervisors and our beloved university, University Malaya. Yeah. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Kiaza. Thank you. Prof. How do we say sama sama in in French to, to, to answer merci beaucoup? I don't know. So I think I have to learn some French after listening to you. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um let's take a few questions. Um I know it's uh four minutes past four, but we do have a question um from Dr. Khairul Anwar. Question to Prof. Khalija. What is your opinion in the collaborator university in, if the collaborator university insists to have full funded from our side? Is it uh, the projection of number of students important to make up the MOA to be successful? Thank you, Prof. If the collaborator university insists to have full funded from our side, is yeah. it the projection number? Full funded for for their living uh, assistance, yes. Okay, money living allowance. Mm -hmm. But for the uh, fees, fees, yes, this is where we must know how to negotiate. Mm -hmm. So that both universities uh, will win. Yeah? Uh -huh. So we may ask them for a discount in the fees because 
I heard also in France, even they are changing their fee structure. Okay? Uh, so here we have to negotiate. Okay? And then the fees is to be paid only at one institution. Okay. For the whole PhD, but, paid yeah. at one institution. No, 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 no. Uh, Supposedly this year, uh, the students in France, so pay in France. Oh, I see, I see, okay. And then the next year in UM, so pay in UM. Mm. The other year, if more in France, pay in France. More in UM, pay in UM. Uh, something like that. Like, that has to be agreed upon. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's spelled so out we, in the MOE? Yes, we can deal about that. Okay? As an institution. But for the student, we can't uh, compromise on their well-being. We should provide them scholarship since they are Malaysian students. So it's normal that we get scholarship for them. But if the country offered scholarships for our students, then okay, no problem. That would be beautiful. But if we want to send our students, we must make sure that they are they have financial assistance. Okay? Uh, we must make sure about that. This is to my view. Okay? But if they can get a scholarship from the host country, okay, no problem. Uh, no problem. So that's why I think the tab dual tabung too, need to be revived. And we, we, maybe we should, we should ask the Kementerian Pelajaran eh, to, to provide us more. Because I think UM has, has many good co tutors and we have good relationship with many universities. So they should, they should support us. Actually not support us, support our students. Eh? Support yes. Thank you, Prof Khalidja, for that um, address. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We have one from Dr. Azno Sabri. Is this program already running? Yes. How do we apply for the funding? Um, uh, I think Prof. Yong mentioned in the beginning of the session that write to them, write to uh, Penolong Vice Chancellor Global for, 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 for you to find out more about the funding opportunities. Dr. Azno? Is it okay? Um, procedures also um, write to them. We from the, from this session, I guess um, the the main message is to have something written on a website somewhere that we can refer to. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, about funding, again, mm -hmm. the, Okay, the research in Malaysia is funded by Malaysia. Hmm? Uh -huh. The research in our, the host country is funded by them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we have a, a partner, so the partner must make sure they have money over there to yeah. support our student. Yeah. Okay. And we over here in Malaysia, we have we must have a certain grant or a certain funding to support our student. We should have that. Lah. Yeah. Inshallah. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, following Dr. Aznor's question. Uh, apart from the procedure, it looks like Dr. Aznur, Dr. Aznur already have a collaborator looking for joint supervisions with funding. Um, I remember one, um, one point we, we made in the session one, how to embark on dual PhD, dual or joint PhD program in terms of joint supervision. Joint supervision does not mean dual PhD because you can still supervise a student with external parties, external um, academician from outside of UM, but it's just a joint supervision, not necessarily a dual PhD. Prof Khalija, would you like to um, address that a little bit more? The um, difference between joint supervision and the dual or joint PhD itself as a program. Okay, okay. dual PhD, you have to register in both universities and then you will get two certificates. Two PhD certificates. Okay, for joint supervision, this not one necessary. I'm not very sure actually mm, not because necessary. I'm not sure whether you have to register in both university because I I am a co supervisor with some universities in Indonesia for example in France for example in Japan for example tapi but they registered in their university so I'm just a co supervisor. Everything is taken care of by the host, the other university because that student got a scholarship from that university, for example. Yeah, but I do not know whether that is considered as joint supervision. Okay, so Dr. Uh, Aznor, yeah, sure thank you, thank you, Professor. Yeah, yeah. And, and it involves MOE, right? You get two certificates. Hmm. So and it's the program that is joint. Yes, the joint PhD. program. And then the, teacher, the student, if they apply for a job, they can even use only one of the degree. Oh. Uh, you see, for example, katalah, for example, eh, 
uh, they, they my uh, uh, suddenly uh, the certificate from uh, France is faster than than the one from UM, for example. Mm. Uh, because UM needs two applications. Mm. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's interesting. Oh yeah. I mean, they they already graduate yeah. in one university, yeah. but they haven't yeah. graduated. Yeah. But, uh, okay. but they passed the final. And the other case, pula. Our uh, university is more flexible during COVID. We are more relaxed. Can it's okay? The student lambat bayar ke, you know, we can pay later, yeah, okay. And and the the agreement is not lapsed. But over there they are very strict. Correct. Uh, uh, even though there is, they are very strict. They are just very strict because they do not know. They are not used to such situations. They are not flexible. But we still have our UN degree. Yeah. So the student didn't lose. You understand? The but student didn't lose. You are correct, Dr. <laughs> you are correct, Dr. Because we have one case, but. When the uh, MOU to the expired, then the student cannot proceed with the uh, with the uh. study yet, and just proceed with us here. And mm. uh, I think, uh, I mean, I like to respond to the Azno's uh, uh, question about he, he did mention that he meant about as a dual PhD. So I suggest that you can just write into Prof. You and. Send your intention that you would like to proceed with this admission. Uh, Knowing that you have already the collaborators, it's much easier for you to proceed. Thank you, Panasian. But make sure students register first. Mm. So register first in our university in UM, yeah. and right. then con convert or what? Yeah, okay. what? Then we work together on the MOU. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, last session, session one, if we already have an existing MOA on dual or co to tell or joint PhD, it's easier to Correct. write on that because you don't have to go through of the process of um, reinitiating and from the yeah. MOU uh, from the start. Mm. Yeah. We have to understand those universities like in France, in Japan, they're very well structured. When you're two thousand, they're very, 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 yeah, very particular. Very difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult. Well, this, this is why uh, Malaysians are more. Uh, we we are lucky to be more diplomatic, lah. So we are we are quite flexible and we can adapt to situations much more easily usually. Yeah. So this is the advantage on our part. Okay, but they have the advantage. They're very fast. Yeah. Uh, administration is very fast. So before signing the MOU, we have to make sure that we understand what they're doing. Yes, their culture, you know, their culture of work, and they also have to understand us. Yes. So face a problem in the in the middle of the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but it's 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 okay like till the next. Yeah? So then the, the well, next we experience well, it will be better, and how we write write our agreement is going to be better, and it will encompass more more issues. Yeah. Uh, inshallah. We learn. We learn from our experience, actually. Yes. Most importantly, our our students get their PhD. Yep, that's the most important. Thing. That's yeah. the most important thing. Our aim is that everyone get their PhD. Gets their PhD. That's a very comforting um, words from AASC themselves. The aim is for the student to get their PhD. So we as supervisors, we we also sometimes when students viva. Kita pun sama gletak, you know. So it's very comforting to um to to know from ASC Puan Azian herself that uh, the university's um spirit is to help the students to get pass through the finishing right. line of the PhD. Yeah, considering so, that, that we have invested a lot of time, in time, resources, and funds. So we have to make the endings happy. Mm. True, true. That's Terima kasih, nice. terima kasih Puan Azian. <laughs> May I invite the other speakers as well on the screen, Prof. Yong or Prof. Uh, Abriza, if you're still around, we can have like a last round of uh, Q&A, very short one. I know it's already past 4 p.m. If there's any um, anyone, uh, any of our speakers that are still around, I can may I invite. Uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. No worries, no worries. That's a very good suggestion from our audience, uh, Dr. Siti Salwati. Perhaps in the next session we can get students to share the success stories or the testimonies, which, which is a, which is good. Last session, session one, we had testimonies or success story from the supervisor's perspective. So perhaps the next one is, um, yeah, from the students themselves. I guess uh, with that, 
um, if there's no further question, uh, thank you so much to all the speakers. Thank you so much to the audience who stayed till the end. We want this to be happening. We want we want this to happen. We want um, more like UM lecturers to get into dual PhD. Even myself, I'm I'm very interested already. Um, have if you have a good student, you know why not? Let's try. Let's try together. And I believe um, um, Uni University of Malaya management as a whole is very supportive of this. We just need to find. Ah, yeah, there, there you go, Prof. Abriza Silicon. Um, let's spotlight Prof. Abriza as well. I believe the whole UM management is actually in the spirit of getting lots and lots of dual PhD. It puts us on the world map. If, yeah. Any last words from uh, Prof. Khalija, Prof. Uh, Puan Azia and Prof. Abriza before we end the session? One, one sentence, Prof. Abriza, silakan. <laughs> Concluding sentence. Okay, uh, I would like to say this in relation to the topic that uh, you have given me, uh, Dr. Aza, in relation to faculty support. Okay, so when I go through some of the questions, it seems that uh, we, we do still have, uh, you know, perhaps a uh, uh, UM community who, who are still not aware that we do have a dual PhD. So this is something that we really need to uh, promote. Okay, so we don't just promote our PhD program, we promote also our dual PhD together. So as what I said just now, ada tiga perkara tadi, all right? Proactive, okay, proactive uh, supervisors, supervi supervisory team, and also faculties, departments. Uh, number two is, I, I forgot what is number two, but number three is that dedicated website. We should have that informational materials, okay? We, we should capture everything that we have in our Garis Panduan, all right, and open it up, yeah, to our, uh, uh, to, 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 to the whole of Malaysia. And also to the world that we do have our dual PhD program, which has actually benefited a lot, okay, to UM and also to our to our community, to our research community. Yeah. That's Thank it. you, Prof. Abriza. Any last words, Prof. Khalija? Uh, for me, I think uh, we have to be serious, okay, in thinking of ways to uh, guarantee sub financial support for students, mm -hmm. both in the host country and in Malaysia. Yeah, because without that. Difficult for us to get students, yeah, uh, and maybe also some small grants available for quotidian programs. Uh, this is to support to that we can move on, move forward. Yeah, okay. Perhaps, perhaps that's how we can capture the uh, university swasta students who you know have 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 money from the family that they don't need to worry too much about the funding, you know, because our our students uh, demographic are quite requiring funding from our side but if we can right. capture the, the group of students who already has you know funding quality is an issue another, for them quality is another thing mm. quality is another thing at um kita students they are much more i would say resilient in terms of the subject yes. 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 they are more drilled in their in their areas yes. rather than the uh, buka rather than other universities, can? Mm -hmm. So, so we need really good students, okay? True, true, true. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you so much, Prof. Khalija. Um, Puan Azian, ada kata-kata terakhir? <laughs> I think, uh, to me, uh, instead of figuring siapa yang menjadi champion kepada uh, proses ataupun pada produk ini, the faculty should they thinking that each and every one of you is the champion for this program. You should everyone should aim and be the champion. It's, it's about all of us. That's nicely put. Thank you so much, Panazian. Thank you, Prof. Abriza. Thank you, Prof. Khalija. Selamat berbuka puasa dalam beberapa jam saja lagi. With this, uh, we formally end the session. I hope it be has benefited all of you who have listened from the beginning. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat petang. Good afternoon. Bye-bye. Dr. Azza. Bye-bye. Nak tinggal kejap tak? Ah, ah, apa, apa? Foto, foto. Foto. Okay. <laughs> foto session. Yes, yes. I invite everyone to switch on your camera so that we can have